Okay, great. So, hi everyone, thanks so much for coming out tonight, but um, as was just explained, I've worked on both sides of the fence. So I've worked within institutions for a number of years, but uh, for the last four years I've worked for myself uh, on my own businesses. Um, I first co-founded a company called Arts People, which had offices in Sydney and Tokyo, and then 18 months ago I launched Soda Arts. So Soda works across contemporary art and design, teaming up with organisations in the cultural sector, like museums and galleries, as well as the private sector. But regardless of who I'm working with, the anchor is always the same. We work with artists to create memorable experiences for audiences. So the inspiration for this talk tonight came about after a conversation with a colleague, a director of a regional museum and gallery, who told me that while she was drafting her strategic plan and her audience engagement strategies, she was instructed to write this in the context of the and being part of the entertainment sector, competing with movies for audiences. This stumped me. My immediate reaction was, what? Surely not. Museums and galleries aren't part of the entertainment sector, they're part of the cultural sector and have a higher purpose of sharing and preserving knowledge, creativity and mind expanding experiences, right? Um, so the topic that I pitched for the presentation is, are we, people working in museums and galleries, entertaining or educating our audiences? I quickly realised that this is a huge question, bigger than 20 slides, so tonight I'm discussing this with specific reference to programming for children and families. And statistics show that if children attend a museum or gallery with their parents and their families, they're more likely to come back as independent adults, so this is actually a vitally important audience segment to consider. The definition of education is information about or training in a particular subject, an enlightening experience. The subtext is that people are active participants in education. There's a transaction taking place. And I'm sure you'll all agree that this idea resonates with most, if not all, activity that takes place in a museum or gallery. The definition of entertainment, conversely, is the action of being provided with amusement or enjoyment. The subtext is pleasure, leisure, fun, enjoyment. It also implies that it's something that happens to you. As an audience member, you're a passive observer of the entertaining thing. So when we first think of children's entertainment, what springs to mind is something like this, which feels very <laughs> removed from museum and gallery programming. This type of event also separates adults and children. It's about keeping children busy and occupied while the adults in the, um, hang around killing time. No adult is loving life at the Peppa Pig play date. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as a parent myself, the reality is that when weighing up what to do with their children, Parents consider very practical, not exciting nuts and bolts things like, is this going to work around my nap schedule and how long is this going to keep my child occupied before they move on to the golden questions such as, is this a minding expanding experience for my child? So suddenly, what's labelled cultural sector and what's labelled entertainment sector becomes less important when we're talking about people physically walking through the door. So the conclusion I reached is that when it comes to all ages programming, it's not either or scenario. They work together. Education and entertainment are important to varying ex extents. So then, how do museums and galleries compete? I realised that there is a third element to consider in this equation, experience. So the experience economy is a bit of a buzzword of the moment with everyone from marketers to museums talking about it, but let's not hold that against it because where museums and galleries can shine is not only providing an enriching experience for children, but designing programs that excite and engage the adults in the room at the same time. As with most things, it's about balance. The key lines are finding the balance between education, entertainment and experience and where these three elements intersect, uh, that's the magical sweet spot that we can work towards to create compelling and inspiring all ages programs. But even so, how can museums and galleries differentiate, differentiate themselves from other entertainment options in those crucial decision making moments of parents? I think the answer lies in providing an experience that children and their families can't get at home or school. Luckily, museums and galleries have access to something incredible that goes straight to that sweet spot. Artists! <laughs> Artists can create aesthetic wonderlands that bring joy to audiences. Entertainment. More than just aesthetics though, artists bring conceptual depth to a visual presentation that can provoke, challenge, inspire, or reveal a different perspective of the world. Educative. Artists can also create enlightening, immersive experiences that resonate with an audience as long after their visit. It's an experience. And importantly, connecting with living artists is something that most children and families can't access on their own at home. 
So while not every practicing artist in their work is suited to all ages programming, connecting with living artists is a unique opportunity that museums and galleries can offer audiences. So to illustrate this point, I wanted to talk you through a project that um, I presented under my previous business. Unfortunately, I could only fit in one. Uh, it was called Jurassic Plastic and was the key all ages arts experience at the 2018 Sydney Festival. It featured the work of a prominent Japanese artist, Hiroshi Fuji, and was a sprawling colourful landscape of over 150,000 discarded plastic toys. And it was at the Lower Town Hall, Sydney, and over 20, day, 20 days, 35,000 people came through the space. Uh, the space comprised several zone and zones. There was the fixed artworks, but it was mostly an interactive space for audiences to play and make. We had a running schedule of workshops with artist educators, also <coughs> with the artist. There was a conversation series for adults. So in one sense, this work was a spectacle. It was a giant room of colourful toys, toys that children were free to run into and touch and instantly interact with. But it had conceptual weight. The subtext of the work was about universal themes of mass consumption and waste and the enormity of the plastic problem. It sparked conversations between parents and children, between adults and adults, and between children and children about waste. And that was the genius of this artist's work. We were able to create an environment with multiple access points. So this experience of being challenged, of being asked to consider something from a different perspective, of seeing something in a new light, this is where artists are so remarkable. So in summary, there has been an industry shift away from children's programming being a box that's ticked and satisfied by a table with some craft materials on it because to be honest, schools and preschools are doing it better. Where museums and galleries shine is in their capacity to create integrated, participatory, layered and transformative cultural experiences for children and their families. And one key to unlocking this door is working with contemporary artists. Thank you.